Hello everybody, Manix here. Got a little knife review for you right here, right now. Feel free to subscribe, hit that little bell notification if you do not want to miss weekly knife, gun, gear, flashlight, lighter, EDC videos of all sorts. And feel free to support me on Patreon, link in the description. This is going to be on a butte, the CJRB Tigress. This comes in a handful of different colors, but I went with this one. Almost gives me kind of a stormtrooper feel, I like the white and the black, but we also have the red accented right there. It's a, it's a triple colored blade and quadruple colored if you count the steel. Really, really cool, cool sci-fi kind of looking knife, but it's very functional too. Get the specs out of the way. 3.5 inch blade, handle length is 5 inches, making the overall length 8.5 inches. We have an AR RPM 9 stainless steel, and the thickness is 0.126 inches. They're saying it's 59 to 61 on the HRC scale. Cleaver slash Santoku style blade, maybe a sheep's foot, whatever you want to call that. I'm going to call it a cleaver just for the sake of this video. Flat and round, stonewash finish on there. Stonewash finish on the tip up carry pocket clip as well. It is not swappable to the left side. Tip up right hand carry only. It is a liner lock. It's on a ceramic ball bearing track, so it's nice and smooth. Flipper, G10 handle scales right here. Skeletonized stainless steel liners in there. Lightly skeletonized. Weighs 6.35 ounces, according to KnifeCenter.com. Just for shits and giggles, let me weigh this guy because, as you may know, if you watch any of my videos, or any knife videos out there for that matter, the specs that you see for weight online usually isn't always correct. Let's see. It ounces. 6.31. They were saying 6.35. Ooh. Actually, that's one of the closest weights I've ever seen. You'd be surprised, sometimes they're almost an ounce off with their <laughs> knives. Not this company in particular, but just knife specs in general on the internet. But anyway, retails at $79.98, but you can get this within the sub $60 range, maybe about $55, bucks, maybe $50 if you find a deal somewhere. I'm going to tell you right off the bat, that's a very good deal for this knife. It's a very good medium grade, medium quality medium tier, whatever you want to call it. We are sacrificing some function here for form. I'll give you that. There's other knives you can get out there for the $50 range that'll be flat out, just pure function, will be a little bit more comfortable, and we'll have a more useful everyday scenario style blade. The blade steel we're getting here with the heat treatment, the lockup, the action, the way it carries, everything's all hunky-dory. It's all very, very well executed. It doesn't have really any obvious flaws. I'm just saying we are sacrificing some function for style. It's a very stylistic, cool, kind of sci-fi looking knife. If you do not like the way this knife looks, which many of you won't, I would just steer clear of this one because we're not really getting a whole lot of extra function beyond that. It's a very good knife. It's very well executed. No obvious flaws that I can think of. The ergonomics are okay. It's a little pointy and kind of angular. Um, it's comfortable enough, but there are kind of some hot spots, you know, right here. You can see how angular everything is. Very abrupt corners and turns on the geometry of the handle. It, it looks cool, but when you actually hold it, it doesn't feel so cool. I mean, if it was a little bit more rounded and more choils here, or maybe it was a more simple design, it would fit my hand a little bit better. But it's just okay. I'd give the ergos maybe like a C+. They're fine. It's just somewhat some hot spots. But most of the time, we pull out a knife, we cut something, we put it back in our pocket. Maybe we just play with the knife, we just flick it open and close all day, and we watch and listen to videos. So the ergonomics are, are good enough. They're not obviously bad, they're just not great. It's not a melt-in-your-hand handle or anything. Liner lock, lockup is good. No up and down play, no side to side. Exceptionally smooth, like in 2023, all knives should be this way, I think. If your knife that you make, even for the $50 range, is not that fast and not that smooth, um, I feel like you may need to upgrade it because there's a lot of knives out here, even like in the $20 range that have very smooth actions these days because of those ball bearing tracks everybody's using now. So very good deployment, A plus on that. Great lockup, A plus on that. I would not use this choil to choke up on. It's not really meant for that, I don't think. You'd have to have a really, really tiny finger. It's just to create a gap between the non-sharpened and sharpened portion of the blade there. So nice and crisp, that's nice. I like the blade, very simple. I love the stonewash finish. I'm a sucker for stonewash finishes. They not only look beautiful in my mind, but they also help with corrosion and rust resistance. Love that pocket clip, it's really cool looking. I love it when knife companies do this. They make a pocket clip reflect the rest of the way the knife looks aesthetically. This is very abrupt corners and turns. Abrupt corners and turns, very angular, industrial, sci-fi, artificial looking, like the opposite of organic. I mean that in a good way. And the pocket clip kind of mimics that. We have a little skeletonization portion right here, a little cutout right there as well. 
so you can screw it in. The screws are flush mounted in there, so you don't have to worry about them bumping up into your pocket or anything. It carries like a dream, it's loop over. Very little will be poking out of your pocket right there. Perfect tension, it's actually on the looser side, but it's actually perfect. I like how squared off it. It's just a cool looking pocket clip, it's great. But it is a little bit wide and sharp on those corners there. It may scratch your car, things like that. Be careful if you just look at it. You can take one look at a pocket clip like this and kind of know what the deal is, but it's a very cool looking, very functional pod clip. I love the thickness of the handle. I know I don't, I'm not in love with the ergonomics, but I do like how thick this handle is. A lot to hold on to, very hand filling. I'm a sucker for hand filling folders. Some people like your slimmer knives, you like your slim, sleek, lightweights. Steer clear of this one. This guy's a little bit on the chunkier side. It's not super heavy or anything, but a little bit thicker, a little bit heavier, uh, but that kind of reflects the style of the blade we have going here. I mean, I don't think I would want a really slim cleaver. Cleavers are meant to be used, they're meant to chop. It's all about that strength. We sacrifice some piercing power right here. It's a very, very obtuse angle. You still can, I mean, some cleavers are at 90 degrees. This guy's not, we have some tip right here. It's, there's just enough tip, but it's mainly gonna be all about chopping, slashing, slicing, pretty much everything other than piercing and penetrating, but you still can do that with that. Regardless, this knife's all about the strength, and that's why we got the steel liners in there. We got thick old G10 slabs here. I like the detail work. We have a two-tone color combination going here, different types of texturing on the planes of G10 slabs. We here we have cutouts right here. A lot of attention to detail, really cool aesthetics on this knife, man. I really am into it. Just very, very cool. I, I appreciate when a knife is stylized. I love this backspacer right here. It's probably anodized aluminum if I had to guess. I love the red. It's just really sexy looking. It just looks futuristic. I like the cutouts right here. They're not going to do anything. It's kind of like jimping, but that's also our lanyard hole. It's kind of a bizarre shape, but it's nice and rounded at the edges. It protrudes out past the handle. I'm assuming that was intentional. I wonder if that could be used as an impact tool of sorts. I'm not really sure, but it's obviously it's not flush with this down here. They completely grinded this portion off, it looks like, and it protrudes out. You may like that, you may not. I think it's mainly just to be a, a non-lethal impact tool. Don't know. Interesting. I'm not a huge fan of that. It looks kind of almost like it's unfinished to me, but at the same time, if it's functional, then I can forgive it for that. Finally, let's talk about this blade steel. This is a new guy on the block, the AR RPM9. If you're not familiar with it, it's, it's kind of somewhat of a complicated composition, but if you do a quick Google search, you'll find out it's pretty close to 9CR13 MOV, approaching the AUS8 range of steels. We're going to have medium rust resistance, medium to lighter edge retention. It's going to get sharp very quickly though, easy to sharpen. You know, if you get a miracle steel that's really, really hard and it holds an edge for 20 years, the problem is it's probably going to take you 20 years to resharpen it once it gets dull again. That's the trade-off. Softer, cheaper steels means easier to resharpen. That's just how it is. Yeah, you'll, you'll have to resharpen it more often, but it won't take you as long to do so. Another advantage to the cheaper, softer steels is that the edges will be less likely to chip. They'd rather just roll over or bend, which means you can sharpen them back out to normal. I don't use my knives so much to the point that I really notice a difference, personally. I mean, some people see that as heresy. I'll call it what you call it. I don't cut and cut and cut and cut and cut and cut and cut stuff 24-7 with my folding knives. I already have a large collection of folding knives, so I tend to rotate through them. But that's not all. Even when I do make a cut, it's usually just opening a package or cutting a zip tie or some plastic wrap or something dinky or stupid like that. To the point, I don't really notice the difference between a really high-end blade steel and a medium-grade blade steel. If you cut all day long, yeah, you're probably going to want a higher-end blade steel. But if you just keep a knife on you just in case, you cut dinky things that once in a while, EDC, maybe you want it just for defense, you just get it razor sharp, you don't really use it that often until that day had to come where you had to pull your knife out on someone, unfortunately. But that's kind of how I see knives. That's how I use my folding knives. I, I just I don't cut so often to the point that I personally really notice a difference in steels. So as long as it's reputable, as long as it's a decent enough steel, as long as it's got a good enough heat treatment, that's all I really give a shit about. I don't have a problem with this blade steel like most knives. Even cheap knives, generally, I don't have an issue with them. But that is just me. Also like the almost like filing work we have right here. It's like useless jimping. Cool looking, but useless. There's no jimping up here. That is a hit, I'll give it. Some people are gonna be into that. They want that jimping. Yeah, I prefer having jimping than not having it, but it's not a deal breaker for me. It's just, it looks like it has it maybe, but it's worthless. The flipper is, uh, although the knife deploys very well, the flipper is kind of coarse. It's not rounded. It's, it's, I mean, it's kind of rounded on the tip. 
up here, but it's a little bit uncomfortable. Sometimes I just wind up using the side of my index finger like that to open it up because it, it kind of irritates my index finger just a little bit. It's not that big of a deal. I've seen worse flippers, but it's certainly not a great flipper. Again, I give it maybe like B minus, C plus on for the flipper itself. Deployment, again, is A plus because it's so smooth and it locks up so well, disengages very well. I like the angular kind of liner lock we have right here, again, mimics the design of the knife. Triple tone color, the white, the black, and the red accent on here, and then our stone watch finish. Just looks really cool. Another popular color combination of this model right here is the black blade with the blue G10 right here. That's also a really sexy looking one too. Very interesting color combinations, which again, some people might find the colors weird or ugly or something. I think they're really cool. But for such a, a weird looking knife, hey, why not? Mimics it very well. I think it, it works well. Great job. A plus on the design aesthetically. It's just a really, really cool sci-fi kind of cheesy looking thing but it is functional too so it's not a toy or anything I, I think it's cool every now and again i like the kind of sci-fi looking knives it makes me feel like a little kid again but it is absolutely a functional carry slash defensive tool at the same time so nothing to make fun of there g10's medium traction so for the 55 bucks if you like the way this knife looks just get it i would say it's a large size folder we have a full grip on my large size hands for glove reference right there it's comfortable enough for scripts carries like that Big old wide broad blade. The steel's good enough. The deployment's really good. The flippers, it, it, the, the ergonomics and the flipper itself are not great. It's kind of pointy and angular. It's not the most comfortable, but it's not an uncomfortable knife either. It's okay. Uh, but the blade steel itself, the execution, the deployment, the lockup, the way it carries, uh, everything else is very, very solid on this knife. I have no obvious issues with this knife personally, except I wish there was a thumb stud here. I'm not a huge, I like flippers and all, but I, I like thumb studs more. I like having both. Sometimes I like having the option. This guy's just screaming for a thumb stud. They have a lot of room. I wish they just put a big old fat thumb stud on here. That would make it a much, much cooler, better knife, I think. But they didn't for whatever reason. They just chose to make it a flipper knife only. I kind of just wish they would stick a thumb stud on there. But I had to grade it 8.5 out of 10, something like that. It, it's a very, co very cool knife. Well executed for what it's trying to be. So... It's not ambidextrous though, sorry. There you go, CJRB Tigris, very worthwhile knife. I would check it out, Manic's out.